for 30 straight days, we, we had to email each other a business idea. And it, which means it basically forces your mind to think of something. And you come up with some of the worst ideas you can imagine <laughs> because you're just, you're, you have a deadline every day. Yeah. But what it does, it, it's a great, like, you know, experiment, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, it forces your mind to be constantly looking at every little thing throughout the day to think, you know, because you're thinking, man, I got to email my brother a business <laughs> idea by, you know, by eight o'clock tonight. I better think of something mm -hmm. because you know, you're coming up with 30 different business ideas in 30 days. It's hard. And so, but your constant, your eyes are now. I was, you know, you drive to work, and you're all of a sudden thinking, man, who, who owns that billboard? Mm -hmm. You sit in a chair at work. You're like, who makes this chair? Who? Because you're constantly yeah. thinking, like, well, who, what, do, what am I using or seeing or touching or feeling every day that maybe we can do better? Mm -hmm. And so, ironically enough, I mean, you can kind of see where this yeah. is going, but somewhere in that 30 days, <laughs> someone got I a haircut. Need, I got a haircut. <laughs> The dream is absolutely free. The hustle is so separate. That hunger to be more, to do more, to give more. You've got to go put in the work. Success takes time. What do I want to do every day for the rest of my life? Do that. Brought to you by Mozzie Energy, it's The Healthy Hustle, a show where we interview today's movers and shakers, influencers, and entrepreneurs. Get an inside look into their stories and how they hustle to get to where they are today. Hustle is waking up one day, the day before you die, and realizing you gave it your all, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy, and in execution. Welcome to this episode of The Healthy Hustle, and today, Today we are talking to the founder of Arrow Cuts, Pete Phipps. Thank you so much for joining us today, Pete. Super stoked to have you in the house, man. Absolutely. So, Thanks for having me. I just got to get this off my chest because I was super curious when I first reached out to you. Being in the haircut industry, do you feel like you always have to have your haircut? Is there like a kind of an undertone in your interactions of, is Pete looking fresh? Um, well, I'm wearing a hat right now, yeah. so that doesn't <laughs> help, my, help my position, but... Um, Yes and no. Yeah, I, think yeah. I try to. I, uh -huh. But the, the truth of the matter is I get a lot of the training cuts. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm yeah. the guy, I'm the guinea pig actually. <laughs> so that's not why I have a hat on right now. <laughs> but uh, we, we obviously, we're growing. Uh, yeah, we yeah. hire a lot of folks. Um, and we have a we have a good pretty good training program we put all through. Yeah, so yeah. I make sure by the time they're cutting your hair, they Ready know what they're go, doing yeah. and whatnot. So um, do I always have... The best haircut in town? Admittedly, no. Uh, but at least I have a good reason why. Hey, it's a courageous position yeah, to I, take. Someone's got to do it, and I might as well be me. That's awesome, man. So I really want to kick off with you know, 18-year-old Pete. What, what's running <laughs> through his head? What, what is he getting into? And what does the next 10 years look like to him? So 18, that puts us all what, about senior year in high school. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I was, uh, I'm, I'm from the Cleveland, Ohio area, so mm -hmm. up in the northeast Ohio I, at that point, I, at 18, I decided to go to West Point, the United States Military Academy over in West Point, New York. Um, and so that was the next big adventure for me, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, it's a pretty big commitment because, one, you're committing to the four years at West Point, oh, yeah. and there's the, the five that you know you're getting into of active duty after. So basically, mm -hmm. at 18, I was making a nine-year decision, if you will. Yeah. Um, and so I was, I was excited. I was... I was um, I wanted a, a challenge. I wanted an adventure. I, I kind of want to go out and see the world. I know mm -hmm. it's cliche to say, but that's that's part of joining the military. Is you want to yeah. be a part of something bigger than what uh, than you know, like serving the country is about mm -hmm. as big as it gets. I think, and uh, and so and another part of that is just you know, I'd, I'd, I'd spent my entire life in Northeast Ohio. It's a mm -hmm. great place. So, uh, it's home to me. But I wanted to see the world. And, you know, oh that's yeah, kind of cliche to say but uh, at 18 that's that was what was and a great vehicle me. to potentially accomplish that mission mm -hmm. as well was that what was driving that decision was that something that friends were doing or something that inspired you no i think it was actually the opposite of what you just <laughs> mentioned uh it was some, it was something that no one else was doing you really know, okay a lot the, the as far as going off to a school like the military academy in new york and mm -hmm. you know that the the other options were to stay in ohio and go to school there which uh, a yeah. lot of my friends are doing which is a, a very good decision on their end but i just wanted i i saw myself as a little different i mm -hmm. wanted a, a different challenge i was willing to kind of put myself out there a little yeah, bit yeah. go to a school with no one else from my high school was going to 100%. you know just uh, i was willing and i actually wanted to do something like that as opposed to going mm -hmm. to the the local school with with where there was a little bit more comfort which i understand yeah. I was totally ready for to have uh, an uncomfortable yeah, experience. Kind of get stuck and in going that. Going to a military school will give you that discomfort a little oh, bit. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably some some of that discomfort helped you get comfortable with the discomfort you're facing now as a, exactly. a business yeah, owner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it it literally um, the best training 
I could have ever asked for with the whole what I've gotten myself into now with the entrepreneurship and the, the business ownership is is literally the the military, and I'm mm-hmm. sure we, we can talk more about that if oh, you want. Oh, definitely. But, um, it it throws every curveball you can imagine. Uh, yeah, you just you literally just become a problem solver more than anything. And so, oh, 100 percent. And on, on the battlefield or wherever you're mm-hmm. at, there's a lot of problems that mm-hmm. takes place there. So you jump in this this mission you have to go travel the world, get yourself into something new and unique. And um, then throughout that time, when you were kind of getting to the end of that first like stint, your, your dedicated time period, your head was, you know, I, I've done my duty, time to move on to something new. Yeah, uh, so I graduated from West Point in 2005. At that point, I knew we all know we, we know we owe at least five years of active yep. duty service. So um, four of my five years were overseas, uh, mm-hmm. whether it be uh, three of them were stationed in Japan, another year in Afghanistan. Um, and so at, at 27 years of age, I'd been basically around the world for the last four years. Yeah. And I was kind of ready to just come home and uh, settle down if you, a bit, mm-hmm. if you will, just because I'd been living out of a duffel bag essentially for oh, yeah. four or five years. Um, it was a great experience. I uh, wouldn't trade it for anything, but it was, it was at 27, I just figured mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to move on to the next chapter in my life. Had the entrepreneurship bug bit you at all while you were doing that? Not at all. Only because I was so focused. You, you, in the military, your, your tunnel vision with just the mission and service to country and all mm-hmm. that. And so you just don't have that business side to you. At least I didn't. I was so focused on the task at hand yeah. um, that I just, I wasn't thinking the business sense quite mm-hmm. yet I, yeah. just because I was so detached from it. I didn't, okay. uh, the military school, I, I didn't, I didn't have business classes, if you will. Uh-uh. I didn't have, then when we graduate, you don't go off and work for a business, mm-hmm. you know, like most folks do. <laughs> so like I an just, internship. No, yeah, yeah. There's no internships in that sense. Um, so I was just in, in such a different realm yeah. that, uh, that's my first real job, if you will, was when I got out of the military and worked mm-hmm. for a corporate, you know, a pharmaceutical company here in the triangle and that was my first real at 27 was my first taste of you know yeah. business if you will and so it's like a really kind of interesting mindset shift there from being so focused on this mission that you spoke mm-hmm. about to then going into corporate america how did you deal with that transition was it tough for you or was it kind of like you know i'm on a new route just yeah it, it wasn't too too tough in the sense because I, I just don't blow things out of proportion yep. too much i just it is what it is i mm-hmm. decided to leave the military and i was able to you know i, th- I think it did a pretty good job of closing that chapter yep. uh, and just moving on to the next one so um but yeah culturally very big difference oh, <laughs> it's man. Yeah. a huge difference to go from <laughs> you know every day waking up super early doing the whole physical training in the morning yep. being around soldiers all day and, and whatnot to all of a sudden like you know, getting on I forty and <laughs> putting the khakis on and going into the commute's a little different than like going a into going run. into a, going into a cubicle and, and knocking out Excel spreadsheets was is a total one eighty. But mm-hmm. I was at that point, you know, ready for something yeah. different. We're, so you get into this this corporate setting completely different than what you've been doing. Were you having? Once you got there, was it like this isn't this doesn't fit right? Uh, no, no, it was. All, I was pretty excited, uh, more so than anything, just to be back in society. Yeah. Uh, and the, the corporate, uh, the job itself was a good job, but I was, I was, I was twenty seven years old. I was pretty fired up to be in mm-hmm. the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, the Triangle, essentially, yeah. and, um, and and just be back in America, yeah. living as a, a young, yeah, you know, a young guy that was. Um, reintegrating himself back into the American society. A good way to weird, do it. As weird as to say that, as I really was, you know, when you're, I left at 23, um, came back at 27, mm-hmm. as, uh, and so I was, I was pretty excited just to be part of the, uh, you know, become part of a, a community that I, mm-hmm. I'm not from here. The first time I touched down was for an interview with the yeah. company, so I, I was learning a, a new area, and it, I've grown to love it. And that's what brought you here was that Correct. position. Yeah, I, I went through a. Got out of the military, and um, as my time I was getting out, they, they what they do is a lot of these firms, they, they essentially recruit young military officers. Okay. And so I went to a job, I guess you'd call it a job fair, if you will, um, where they just put you through just endless interviews. I gotcha. and, and one particular interview was a company here in the Triangle. Mm-hmm. So it sounds to me like, given where you are today, that light might have started to fade about being in that corporate setting. And, <laughs> and something shifted in Pete's head that yeah, said, hey, yeah, let, yeah, me, I mean, let me branch out. Yeah, I, I won't. I mean, the company I work for, the great company, mm-hmm. um, great people. They treat me really, really well. Um, but it just, I knew, and I was very honest with them as well. I just knew it wasn't long term. Yeah. Um, and so, but it, it was. I, I learned a lot though. I needed to. I needed mm-hmm. to be there for a year. What kind of two. skills do you think were you were getting there that that helped you make the transition? Um, it's a good question. Um, just a lot of the, more administrative type mm-hmm. stuff. 
yeah. Excel, PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, Some like kind of the fundamentals. Because I had, of yeah, admins. because I had I, the what I learned. I think uh, a lot in the military is just the actual um, people skills, mm-hmm. management, if you will. You're yeah. in charge of soldiers. You have to get to know everyone from an 18 year old. There's probably a mindset to, thing there too. Yeah, like the leadership is huge in the military. That's mm-hmm. essentially the number one driving lesson you, you, I think anyone should take from the military is the ability to, as long as, as far as if you are in a leadership mm-hmm. position, uh, it's something we take very serious in the military. But then I, but I, what I didn't have then is the, the corporate kind of the, the, the administrative yeah. side of things as far as seeing a project from mm-hmm. start to finish. And Did and, you think about the, ro- the work that you were doing in that way while you were doing it? Like, Hey, I'm kind of gaining skills here that might help me do something different later on down the line because i think like a lot just like the background here is that there's people probably tuning into this that are in that corporate setting maybe have this entrepreneurship bug in the back of their head Mm -hmm. were you consciously pulling value from the day to day to say hey these are interesting tidbits to take with me not necessarily because i can see where it's a good question but i just my i try not to overthink things too much yeah yeah the real (laughs) answer is like i was just told to do something and did as best that I could. Uh-huh. And I just knew in the back of my mind, of course you're gaining experience and gaining knowledge, yeah, but yeah. I wasn't trying to like game it in a sense I got of you. like, yeah. if I do this, I'll, it'll, <laughs> three years from now, this will, this will come through for me. No, no, um, yeah. It's more so just learn and grow. Mm-hmm. And eventually if you, if you pay attention and re- retain knowledge and whatnot, it'll, it'll come to, you know, you'll, mm-hmm. you'll reach into that, we, in the military as a rucksack, you reach into that rucksack and you get that knowledge back and when you need it the most. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So eventually there had to be this like aha moment mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. Wait, can run us through the, <laughs> run us through the, the aha moment. Um, well, so the business itself, it started by uh, my brother and I, mm-hmm. Andy. Um, and so that this true story behind it is, and I'll spill the beans if you will, uh, <laughs> is that, so he was out in Denver at the time. I had just moved to Raleigh. We're both working jobs that um, we knew weren't long term. Um, and so we, we were kicking around a little bit. We wanted to start something together, essentially. At least that, that's what the thought was. And we just had no clue what that <laughs> idea was. Uh, um, and so, the and I'll give him credit for this. He For 30 straight days, this is back in 2011 or 12, for 30 straight days, we, we had to email each other a business idea. And it, which means it basically forces your mind to think of something. You come up with some of the worst ideas you can imagine <laughs> because you're just, you're, you have a deadline every day, yeah. but what it does, it, it's a great, like, you know, experiment, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, it forces your mind to be constantly looking at every little thing throughout the day to think, you know, cause you're thinking, man, I got to email my brother a business <laughs> idea by, you know, by eight o'clock tonight, I better think of something mm-hmm. because you know, you're coming up with 30 different business ideas in 30 days. It's yeah. hard. And so but your const your eyes are now I was you know you drive to work and you're all of a sudden thinking man well, who well, who who owns that billboard mm-hmm. you sit in a chair at work you're like who makes this chair who because you're constantly yeah. thinking like well who what do, what am I using or seeing or touching or feeling every day that maybe we can do better mm-hmm. and so ironically enough I mean you can kind of see where this yeah. is going but somewhere in that thirty days <laughs> someone got I a need, haircut I got a haircut <laughs> <laughs> and walked out of that walked out of that particular shop and that's that was my idea on that particular day mm-hmm. um, pitched it to him and he to his credit he's he he had been he did not have the military background so he was much much more advanced with the business side than mm-hmm. I ever was um, and so he was able to take the idea and kind of run with it that's incredible because he was. He was living in Denver, um, spent some time out in Portland during an internship, and just the West Coast and some of those cities, they're more, a little more cutting edge, mm-hmm. if you will. Okay. No pun intended. But, uh, <laughs> um, so when I pitched the, the barbershop idea, he was able to kind of um, take it and run with it as, and, and kind of vet it a little more than I, I could have. Because I was, I, was, yeah. I was still... You know, I was still out of the military. I had done, I, I had done nothing but get like your typical military cut every week. So I wasn't yeah. as well versed in the <laughs> pretty simple in the civilian haircut scene as, <laughs> as, as others. Well, I, I love that whole exercise. And in our conversation earlier today, talking with um, Nathan from Story Driven, mm-hmm. he hit on how like your brain is a problem solving tool, and if you give it a problem to solve, it wants to, it wants to solve, mm-hmm. it wants to answer the question. And like such a cool parallel to giving your brain this problem to solve every day, a cool exercise for people coming into entrepreneurship. And, and looking today. back, I mean, it, it was necessary because mm-hmm. if you sit down, you think, I run into so many folks and I, and I admire their, you know, their determination, but it's just, I want to start something mm-hmm. I, and that's their comment. And I, I was no different than them at one point, but if the idea of just, I'm going to come up with like, as if it's just going to fall from the sky, it's mm-hmm. just, it's, it's not yeah, I'm gonna it's irrational. And, and so what it does, it just forced you to actually um, 
because I think everyone's sitting there thinking, well, I'm going to develop the next app or I'm going to do something. And, and for, to us, I'm, I think Handy and I will be the first. To, we're not the smartest guys. <laughs> and we're, we'd realize everyone else is trying to do the next sharpest, smartest thing. You're cr- trying to create the next Instagram, the next Facebook. Or when reality is, and that's great. I mean, sh- certainly I think all of us in this room could wish, wish we had started all these <laughs> these tech companies and whatnot. But sometimes, you know, entrepreneurship is a wide range of things. Oh, and yeah. Sometimes the answer can literally be right in front of you. And and so, you know, when I walked out of that barber shop six some years ago, at no point did I think I wasn't even sure is this a good business or not. But at least it forced that. Ex- mm-hmm. If it weren't for that exercise, I would have just walked out of that barber shop and thought nothing of it. I yeah, thought, well, I just got another know. haircut. Instead, I walked out of that and said, hmm, I think we can do that better. Yeah, that I mean, that's what a cool like way to discover the concept. And was it, was that what it was when you walked out? Like, hey, that was not a great experience. Essentially, I mean, there's there's other aspects that went into it, but yeah, it was the fact that um, you know I'm just at the time I was 27. I was like I said, a mil- out of the military, so all of a sudden I'm now able to get a normal haircut, <laughs> a normal uh, average American haircut, if you will, and uh, the, they didn't have to follow any type of regulation. Yeah. So now I'm I'm able to kind of. Have Express a little more vers- <laughs> versatility in my hair, if you will, and uh, and and so I just so all of a sudden, and I keep in mind I'd also been overseas for so long, so I I was reintegrating back into the American haircut scene, <laughs> and so I was making it sound more dramatic than it really was. But so I'm googling these like you know national chains yeah. or, or high end salons. I'm just trying to figure out where does a guy like me even go. I'm I've oh yeah this whole so like, discovery I've, discovery of and and I'm I don't and I just wanted a normal basic haircut. Mm-hmm. I'm not you know. Like, Thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm a simple guy here. Like, a simple guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I started going to the national chains and just realizing the real kind of the moment was when I, so I was new to the triangle and I immediately kind of fell in love with the triangle. So I thought I got here in 2010 and this is when the triangle was really hitting its mm-hmm. stride. If yeah, you will. 100%. Um, and so I, all of a sudden at 27, 28 years old, I'm going to really good concerts at Red Hat yep. and whatnot. And there's good, there's breweries popping up left and right. The restaurant scene's good. All this stuff, everything I was kind of getting myself into and and friends were doing with me and whatnot, what I, I'd consider, quote unquote, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then all of a sudden, I'm off in some shopping center getting a terrible haircut at a terrible national chain with terrible customer service yeah. with and you're just thinking to yourself wait a second this doesn't everything fit, else yeah. i'm everything else raleigh durham chapel hill is offering right now is is pretty cool and yeah. it's going in the right direction it's got this great momentum and yet for my haircut i veer off and go out to this this <laughs> you know this generic chain if you will oh, yeah yeah and so that's kind of the moment where i was like wait a second why can't why can't the haircut experience for the for the triangle mm-hmm. citizen match the the food, beverage, music, sports yeah. experience they're getting with everything makes else. a lot of sense, and Raleigh's really adopted a cool mm-hmm. vibe to it. Mm-hmm. And um, so you you get this concept. Andy sounds like he's doing a little proofing <laughs> off in the distance, but now you have to start laying the foundation to, to build this thing on. And um, I know it seems today you have a really well established network locally. Know a lot of great guys. The guys at Trophy, for an example, mm-hmm. was networking a big part of building this business for you? Not initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the first thing is just coming up with the business plan itself yeah. to make sure one is this is this something we want to do? Two, could it be it could it be a good business? Yeah. Uh, you know, in the sense of profitability. That seems so straightforward to me. Like we, we go straight to bit. Was that how it went for you? Like we got to get the business plan down. Yeah, like, because we didn't. We had no, no more clue. concept expiration. Or... Well, I, I definitely. I mean, I mm-hmm. so in that year, it took up took us about a year to find our first location. Mm-hmm. So we had the idea of a barbershop. It took a good twelve months, maybe even more, for that first location, which was Cameron Village, yep. to become available, if you will. And so in that year, um, I you know, whether it be going to, going around the country to see friends or weddings, I was basically doing my research on the road. Mm-hmm. So I got my, in that year leading up to our opening a Barrow, I got my haircut in New York, Austin, Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Portland, basically just wherever I could. A bunch of cool yeah, towns. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. to get a feel for mm-hmm. what what's out there. Yeah. And then, so I'd just go in there and take a whole bunch of pictures. And, you know, and, 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 and just Tourist doing my research because we didn't, the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and also just asking the person, cutting my hair in Seattle or LA, like, what do you like about your job? How many hours do you? I was mm-hmm. doing as much research as we could because two brothers who have never who have never given a haircut in their lives 
are about to start a barbershop. Mm. It's pretty, <laughs> I mean, at least, like the guys, that, you know, we have a great relationship with Sean at Fool's Team and the guys at Trophy. Like, at least they know, like, <laughs> at least they brew beer. Like, we were getting, we, we were going to open up a barbershop having never given a haircut. Yeah, throw lives. the garage door up, bring yeah. the neighborhood and kids so, in, like, give them some guys. And so yeah. we did, we absolutely did our research mm-hmm. in a sense. And so while I was off, you know, getting a straight razor shave in New York City to, to figure out how that all worked, mm-hmm. Andy was doing a very good job of um, kind of piecing together the business plan and, and running the numbers to see, is this even a good industry? Because part of you have to, you have to question is, wait a second, if I'm going to these generic national chains for haircuts and no one else has come up with a, an idea that I, that I think will work, mm-hmm. is it a good idea? <laughs> like, maybe there's a reason this doesn't exist. And uh-huh. so we had to kind of go and get a feel for some concepts out west or New York yeah. City, Austin, Texas. There's a good concept just to see, are we on to something or not? Yeah. I mean, I've been down to Austin too and got mm-hmm. it, my haircut at a very similar place. Mm-hmm. It seems like those styles or that customer care, the mm-hmm. experience was kind of adopted in some of those other stations mm-hmm. too, which must have been a great point of confirmation. Yeah, it was, it was huge for us. Um, that must have been really exciting because too. Because then you realize, yes, I think we're on this. Now, yeah. you have no clue whether or not it's going to work. No, you know, but. Because <laughs> at that point, it's on to you It's on you to make it make it work. Mm-hmm. But at least then at that stage, you're, you feel as though you're, you're heading the right direction. Oh, yeah. So for other um, entrepreneurs and people that may be trying to start like a brick and mortar mm-hmm. type of concept, whether it's, it's a barbershop or something else, are there any things in particular you think that someone in that position needs to keep in mind when going into a physical store location type of business concept? Yeah, I, I guess the two that <laughs> two that <laughs> pop out are, um, one, it takes longer than you think, location, the brick and mortar. Because if you start a tech company or, you know, Mati, you guys can do this behind the scenes. Mm. You can start a tech company in a basement. Mm-hmm. I mean, Facebook was started in a dorm room. <laughs> so with, with brick and mortar retail, you're at the helm of, like, you're kind of, you, you, you have to wait for a space to become available. Yeah. It has to be the right space. The deal has to make sense. <clears throat> they have to want you. You know, there's just a oh, lot yeah, of variables. So, that's, so when we say, you know, we started Arrow in 2013, we wish we could have started back in 2012, 2011. It uh-huh. just it just takes time to get these locations. So that's something for everyone keep in mind is if, if you are going down the retail brick and mortar mm-hmm. route, um, is to keep in mind that just the time it takes. So I would if you're going down that route, I would even if you're not quite ready to start your business necessarily, if you're in mm-hmm. the business plan phase, it's, it doesn't hurt to go and and talk to and get a feel for. Oh, yeah the real estate world because you know talk to a broker go around make some phone call mm-hmm. when you see a for lease sign i mean what i how i learned it is i we well before we even really were looking for a space i would just call the numbers on the for lease oh, signs yeah. and just to just because i i had no clue how this stuff worked you had to learn know, it yeah i had to learn it i had mm-hmm. to learn what you know how much uh, per square foot this should what what's yeah. high what's low what's good and, all, and so yeah um so that's something to keep in mind the second thing um i would say is uh, and this is just fair warning if you're getting in the, the retail world is just be ready to work your tail off. I know that <laughs> applies to almost all businesses. The only difference is with retail. If you have an, a door that opens and closes that anyone can come in during those hours, you have to be willing and able to essentially hold it down. And so, oh, yeah. cause the initial answer for anyone in the brick and world is, well, I'll hire someone. Well, I'll get someone to do mm. it for me. Well, that per- that's fine on paper, but in reality is that person you hire, those folks you hire initially in the retail world, they're going to want, christmas eve off they're gonna want they're gonna go on their july vacation Mm -hmm. and you need to be ready willing and able to basically yeah put every year if you want to start something be almost put everything to to the side and just go all in Uh, specifically with because you ask about the retail Mm -hmm. brick and mortar side specifically with that because if if you're a tech company you can literally just kind of you can take your computer anywhere (laughs) and go do what you need Mm -hmm. with brick and mortar if you say your door is open at 10 someone's Someone's gotta gotta be be there at 10 and so if if you if the person you hired and you think they're great and they call out sick one day you mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're going in to do it yeah and so it's just something that I think some folks kind of um, look overlook if you will yeah. because they 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 fall in love with their concept so much they forget about the kind of and the spreadsheet doesn't show people spreadsheet lives. doesn't show the fact that on a Saturday morning when you had plans all of a sudden you don't have plans anymore. Yeah. And, you know, this is a great segue into the team that you built at Arrow. And, you know, being a user myself, like, great customer experience. And it sounds like you've been able to put people in those places mm-hmm. that have really helped the concept be successful. I'm curious, kind of what are your what are your tips and tricks for really building a successful team? And what have you laid in place to, to find those individuals that are willing to, to help you hustle at the end of the day? Yeah, uh, so that my, my biggest thing... I, the, with with the what I love the most about Arrow is the team and, mm-hmm. and just it sounds cliche culture building. Why? Because 
I didn't go to, I didn't get my MBA. I don't have a corporate background in a sense where I didn't get out of, I didn't go to, out of college, graduate from college and go into work my way up uh, some company. I went, I, my military, my background is essentially military. Mm-hmm. At least I, I view it that way. And in the, and in the military, it's all about teamwork, culture, Oh, 100%. You got to work together so as I, a unit. So as much as I love the marketing side of Arrow and the, the the business side at times and the you know, whatever the case may be, my number one thing, what I love the most, is building a building a mm-hmm. culture with the right people. And so I take it very very seriously because it draw it can pull right back to my days as a platoon leader in the army. Yeah. When I was 22, 23 years old. Your first job as a platoon leader, and you're in charge. You're like I said, you're 23 years old in charge of 25, 30 guys. Mm-hmm. that are all older than you essentially <laughs> they're all far far more experienced but at 23 yeah. years old as a as a young west point grad you're ultimately in charge mm-hmm. and so um I'm, I'm able to take those experiences of team building and culture and apply them to arrow and how i've done how we go about it mm-hmm. there's a number of different ways um maybe your top two or three things that you think have really helped build the culture there number one get to know your people okay about it. And, I'll, and i'll tell a quick little story um it deals directly I, we take uh birthdays pretty serious at arrow if you will yeah. and the reason that that is one birthdays are fun right oh like yes yeah. everyone loves their birthday mm-hmm. um everyone likes to be acknowledged on their birthday and whatnot but it goes back to my time as a kind of a cool story um from my military time one of the best platoon leaders i had or sorry he was he's my when i was a platoon leader my one of the best company commanders i had um he, we were all hanging around one day and he started so i'm 23 years old and I'm in charge of 20, you know, 25, 30 guys. And they're all, we're all busy working. And my company commander, who I worked directly for, started go, pointing one by one at each of my soldiers and asking me, what's his wife's name? What's his daughter's name? What's his birthday? You know, he's basically yeah. quizzing me wow. to see if I, and and because his point all along was, you've got to get to know your, it, mm-hmm. if you show that you truly care about your people, mm-hmm. they'll they'll return it. That, yeah, that to wow. you. And so ever since, so that it, to that experience, so because of that, I, I I memorized everyone's wife's name, anniversary, birthday. No joke, because that's just the way. Yeah. That was his point: is that you've got to be invested wow. in your people. And so I've taken that same approach, if you will, with Arrow, and I, I personally deliver birthday lunches to each of our employees on their birthday or at least close to their birthday. a lot of them take their day off yeah. right? some some of them don't need to come in on their birthday you know at the house <laughs> excuse me yeah, so um, but it's just one it's, that's just a small thing that, that I think that's a great way to build culture is leadership that actually cares that, that's that actually shows up that. on and the birthday thing it's kind of you know it's nothing that serious. It's nothing that significant. But it means but it a goes lot a long way, it I does. think. And so, and there's authenticity behind it. These are folks we really care about. It's not mm-hmm. just me just showing up, just with you know whatever meal and just walking out. The, it's I, we actually care about mm-hmm. our folks. And so, I think that I think that plays into the building of the culture. It definitely, I, I love that investing in your team, and, and they'll come back to you. So Colton, remember to bring me lunch. <laughs> <laughs> be, be the, the, interesting, the best part is the the wider. So now we're up to fifty two employees. So I'm I'm, I'm having a. I, That's I, a lot I, of birthdays. Yeah, well, that and I I used to I think I can still pull off most of them, but I, I memorize all their birthdays. Yeah. So I'm I, I although I'm getting a little shaky now that we're up to the past fifty employees, but the fun part is it's it's honestly fun because you get the we let we let them pick wherever they want the lunch to come from cool, cool. yeah and it's a wide range it's pretty funny to watch <laughs> watch the the orders come in yeah of of because uh, it says it's it's just fun to see where they they pick these spots and 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 the I'm sure you know some folks get the five dollar sandwich and the other one i had a forty dollar steak one time and i was like i think we might need to put a put a dollar cap on this but we haven't yet so Man, that's that's of a, course now i'm saying this on the pod if anyone yeah. on the team listens to this i'll be at ruth's chris picking up a lunch yeah. by next week probably <laughs> place my order yeah. um what a cool testament to your leadership and you know a really cool way to draw something you learned in the military to a very practical application what mm-hmm. you're doing today and i was making a note while you were talking like you really didn't have any formal business training and you came to like build this concept and do were there mentors yeah well i mean first and foremost my brother yeah uh, he, so i i have a partner in crime if mm-hmm. you will so um i'll be the first to admit when we started this I, I i i was a year and a half or two years at the pharmaceutical company i worked i was a project manager so mm-hmm. i had a little bit but by no means enough to yeah. pull off what we're trying to pull off here 
Andy's the kind of the brains behind. I, I'm the I'm yeah. the good looks. He's the brains. Uh, <laughs> Shout out so, to Andy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but he's able to. He has a background in private equity. He's uh, started his own company on the side now, and so mm-hmm. we're able to um, kind of the way we view it is. He handles a lot of the business side. Mm-hmm. I'm the operations guy just okay. because he has the expertise in the business through mm-hmm. business school and his prior career in private equity. And then I have the, the operations management side just for mm-hmm. the military. So it's actually worked out pretty well. An interesting question I've asked too. Uh, we've interviewed other like husband-wife combinations. Uh, Tom and Jenny's is a great example mm-hmm. of, of a, a couple tag team. How has it been running a business with your <laughs> brother? Do, do you recommend it? Do you recommend having a business partner? Uh, definitely a business partner, I think, mm-hmm. because, because there's so many things that you're just, I don't care how smart you are, you're going to get thrown so many different scenarios that helps no to have one person someone, can figure yeah. it out. There's just so many ways to, there's pros and cons to every situation that comes mm-hmm. your way, and so you have to have someone to at least bounce ideas oh, off yeah. of. Sure and then specifically cool. to me, I we have a we have a very good relationship. He's mm-hmm. my oldest brother, um, and so I just, we grew up uh, in a very good household where we, we respected each other, and being the youngest brother, I just, mm-hmm. I just, I, if you see where I'm going with this, I yeah. just, I, I know my place and yeah. I, 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 I realize that. So we've had no issues because, um, like I said, our parents raised us really well and we knew to be very respectful. So I, yeah. I think we, 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 we don't have the, the throwdowns or the argument. Yeah. Like we're, well, it's really, we're just a pretty, we're, we're your typical like Midwestern, <laughs> you know, like we're from Ohio. We don't have, we're not terribly emotional. Uh, we're pretty uh, level headed. Yeah. And so the way we go about Andy and I, the way we go about things is, is, is pretty, um, I think calm and collective. Yeah. No, I, it's really cool hearing you guys both speak about, you know, like the roles you play in the business. Cause you can tell there's such a great relationship there and it definitely has proved to, to turn into an awesome concept with arrow. But I imagine along the way of building this, there's got to be some fun mess ups, some hiccups along ah, the yeah. way. <laughs> and I, I want to hear like some of the some of the interesting occurrences that may have happened while you're opening. What it's six locations now? Six locations. Um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know how many of them I should share in a sense, <laughs> uh, it, but there's always screw ups, and you, you, yep. anyone that says they're, they they don't make mistakes, they're lying. Mm-hmm. Um, especially in the small business world where there's just so much unknown. Oh yeah. Um, I guess the one that all the one the big one was essentially uh, is so so for the lis- listeners who are maybe aren't familiar with our concept five of our locations are called Arrow mm-hmm. and one's called Pedro Williams. Oh and yeah. So what I would not recommend a business doing is ever setting out to have the same business with the two names. <laughs> that was not planned. Uh, and but it does the the kind of the quick backstory of it is that there's another establishment in the triangle called Arrow in one particular town that we're in. And so we filed for the trademark for Arrow, and we have the trademark, but the way trademarks work, um, the trademark was filed after the other business had already opened their doors. Oh, and yes, so we, we ended up having to name one of our shops a totally different name. So we came up with a, a, a character named Pedro <laughs> Williams, who doesn't really, it doesn't really exist, but um, which thought would be a fun thing to do. But anyways... But all that was a result of just a mistake with, quite frankly, trademarking. Mm-hmm. Like, and so, um, and so for, for the listeners, if you yeah. have a cool business idea, <laughs> get your name trademarked. <laughs> do it early. <laughs> get the domain. No, seriously, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. So uh, that, there, I, hope, I don't know if that, that's, that's one that I'm willing to share. Yeah. The, rest, the rest are. Uh, now, uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's mistakes every day. I just, my biggest thing is we're just very honest with our folks. Mm-hmm. Um, we have we call them shop leads. Yeah. We have essentially have a leadership team at our, at our company now, which is mm-hmm. really cool. We're growing in the sense that we can have different positions like that. Yeah. We're just honest. I mean, we're the first to tell them that we've, Hey guys, we made a mistake here. Hey, this, we, we thought this would work and it didn't. Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't think there's any shame in that no. as long as your intent is. And so I think, the, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, I don't I don't know if I, some just get kind of cocky. Some think they're, you know, oh my my idea is working, so therefore mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just good. I'm a I'm good at business or something. <laughs> the reality is like we're all just kind of figuring it all out as we go. Oh yeah. And if, and if you and um, obviously there's there's some that do it better than others, but let's just be honest. Each day brings all new challenges, and mm-hmm. no one's no one's knocking it out of the park. Yeah. I want to jump into to your hustle because you, you got six locations throughout the triangle. Um, Chapel Hill, mm-hmm. Raleigh, Durham, like mm-hmm. all the above. You're driving a lot. Like how many miles are you putting on your car? <laughs> a lot more. So we opened up the Chapel Hill shop a month ago and yeah. it's been a doozy on the, uh, I got my battery. Uh, yeah, speaking of which this morning, AAA gave me, put a new battery in. That's how bad things are. Um, but no, you just I just gotta get the, the beater, man. Like, no, that's man just... So that's, the, trust, trust me, I'm there. I got that. Uh, 
No, I, I'm seeing a lot of the triangle in the last mm-hmm. month or two, but it's part of it's part of the gig. It's part of growing. Yeah. Um, What's a normal week like for you about like how you're splitting your time among your locations? Yeah. So when so the, right now, a kind of tough question to answer, only because we just opened up Chapel Hill a month ago, okay, and so, so I go all in on new shops. That's uh-huh. just the way we do things. I put everything off to the side, and so I've been essentially. We just hired a someone recently to. When I say I go all in, I. The shop, I obviously don't cut hair. No one needs needs me cutting hair. Do you have hair. your barber's license? No, I don't have. No, <laughs> no, no I can't. I can give you a butt. I can give you a mohawk yeah. right now. Though. I can give you a real good mohawk. Um, no, so I, what I do is I'm essentially the receptionist mm-hmm. at a new shop to make sure I'm shaking every customer's hand. I'm seeing, I'm making sure the new shops get off to a good start. You know, mm-hmm. part of we go back to the whole leadership thing. Oh if, yeah. If you're gonna start something, you got to be all in on it. In my and leading by example to a certain by degree. Example, being and be there from day one all day every day for the first month or so so the last month i've been spending all my time in chapel hill essentially mm-hmm. um, but now that we're that's up and running and we got someone kind of holding it down for me um i'm now able to i, I, I say I, I basically bounce around okay and so I, I i stop in all the shops at least four or five times a week and it's just at random times mm-hmm. it's, it's tough for me it, I, I try to hit the shops before or after hours to catch yeah. some of our employees or whatnot because during hours, I'm just of no real value. Yeah. I'm kind of it's, it's moving pretty fast. It's too, moving right? fast. These are small spaces. No one, no one needs. You know, it's at that <laughs> point, I'm just like the awkward di- guy yeah. like standing there mm-hmm. uh, watching haircuts. So, um, <laughs> but I do absolutely think it's important to show my face a good amount. So yeah. I, I uh, keep a very good relationship with um, our shop leads. They're basically, basically shop managers, but I, mm-hmm. I, I, I really distaste the. I really don't like the term man, the word management manager mm-hmm. because they're just. Leader to me, it's back, back to my military background. Yep. If you're in charge of something, you're leading it. You need to mm-hmm. lead by example, and so we call it it's cheesy and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But we, most you know, uh, other companies have sh- manage store managers or shop managers. We have shop leads, and so yeah. my job is to to make sure I'm, I'm giving them everything they need to, yeah. to run their shops as well as they can. And once again, like it's. It's to some people, it may seem little, but it really does change perspective and the mindset towards even that position that they're taking on to really know that this is me in, in charge of this. So I think that's a great way. Yeah, to the, the, enable and I, we made it very clear that because when you hear the word you're going to manage people, man, to me, managing people just it's, you're just telling someone what to do. Go over mm-hmm. there and do that. Go, and that's not that's just not effective to just to yeah. constantly be telling someone what to do or what not to do. Mm-hmm. Leading to me is an entirely different mentality and approach and and, and lifestyle, if you will. It's leading means you, you do things yourself and they'll follow essentially mm-hmm. as opposed to sitting back and just pointing fingers and telling people what to do. Yeah. I love that. Um, so kind of getting, getting towards the, um, some other insights towards your entrepreneurship career. Are there any other like philosophies or principles you've held true to through building arrow? I know you, you continue to put people first. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the way that you've positioned leadership in the organization is, is really incredible. Are there any other tidbits that you think are, are been really valuable to the success of arrow as far as leadership? Well, wise? even outside of that, like mm-hmm. local partnerships seems to have been a big thing. That's you guys huge have been for about. us. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Being a good, being a good neighbor, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, cliche saying but uh, the, the you know we offer the complimentary beer and mm-hmm. um to have the partnerships with full steam in durham and then yep. trophy and raleigh that's that's crucial for us and and, and the good relations we have with other companies mati specifically mm-hmm. that's just there's a lot of it's you don't want to go to alone especially in the brick and mortar world mm-hmm. you got to be a good good part of the community and i think that's i th- i think our approach uh shows that, that mm-hmm. um we want to we, we like partnerships we I wheel these barber chairs into all different places. You wouldn't believe the places we've done shaves and haircuts. For Best comp- place you've ever done a haircut. Well, so, I mean, the breweries are fun. Yeah. Um, we have a cool event here. I'll, I'll put a little plug in. Um, yeah. This, the, we're, we're plugged. We're, we're open to all <laughs> kinds of plugs, man. The, uh, so the Duke, Can- we have a very good relationship with the Duke Cancer Center in Durham because of our, our, our Durham shop, Pedro Williams. Mm-hmm. We've had a very good relationship with them from day one. We actually give complimentary, I'll put a plug in for... Uh, another thing is uh, the, any Duke, from day one when we opened up in, in uh, Durham, I walked over and introduced myself to the folks at Durham Cancer Center, and I basically just said, "What can we do for you? We're new business in town. What can we do?" Because um, that's just I thought you know one, it's a nice thing to do, and because mm-hmm. a lot of businesses, it's almost like, "What can you do for me? I'm new yep. here. Can you put this poster up or whatever?" Mm-hmm. Instead, I just walked in and said, "Hey, we're new. What, what can we do for you?" And we came to the decision that we would offer complimentary haircuts to any Duke cancer patients and their caregivers, 
no questions asked, free of charge forever, basically, because wow. these folks are, well, they're going through a brutal stage. Yeah. I mean, the Duke Cancer Center is a, a tough place mm-hmm. as far as, and these caregivers, unfortunately, a lot of the patients aren't able to come over just for obvious reasons, um, but the caregivers are the husbands, the wives, the brothers, mm-hmm. the sisters from Texas, yeah. Florida, New York, you name it, All that, are, that are cooped up in these little... Mm-hmm you know, hospital rooms for however long. And so mm-hmm. in, long story short, we have a very good relationship with the Duke Cancer Center. They do an awesome job every uh, November mm-hmm. during Movember. Oh, here we go, yeah. Speaking of which, is, that, is your mustache part of it? I'm always, not proud of do it. Do you always rock the, is this a, this no, is a this, November this thing? This is a Movember okay, thing, right, yeah. Right. I'm, getting next, lo- I'm next, getting a lot of next, bad feedback. I don't know. Next, <laughs> when I see you next July, we'll see how, <laughs> when you're still rocking it in July. Uh, but anyways, the Duke Cancer Center does an incredible job um, raising money for November. They're doing a really cool thing every year. This will be our third year doing it on Friday night at Full Steam. We go over there and it's an event called Bid Your Face Off. And what they do, so all these guys, all these doctors and whatnot from the Duke Cancer Center have grown these beards and mustaches. And the the way they raise money uh, at Full Steam every year is they, you basically can bid, people can bid on your face and essentially they, you're paying the money, you get to do whatever, you then get to direct our barbers to do whatever oh, cool. they want on that doctor's <laughs> face so nice. they get you know lightning bolts yeah whatever the case may be the the funkiest their their hair, beards and mustaches turn into hideous hideous <laughs> uh, looks at the end of the night but it's all for good cause that's so that, awesome man. i think uh, hopefully that answers your question uh, as far as the the, the fun funky oh, places yeah. we've gone and and uh, one, it's 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 fun, but two, mm-hmm. it's good marketing. Let's yeah. just be honest. When we reel, wheel a barber chair in, um, Adam's a great guy at Crank Arm, mm-hmm. uh, the brewery over in yeah, Raleigh. Yeah, yeah. About three years ago, you know, he's he always rocks this big old oh yeah big old beard. And three years ago, he came to us and said, "Hey, I I think I want to shave it all off to raise some money." And so we on a Friday night, we rolled a barber chair in there and gave him a straight razor shave. He He'd, he's been ha- he'd, ha- he'd been having that beard for years, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we, we took it down in front of about 50, 60 people while they raised money. So stuff That's like awesome. that is yeah. it, it, it just makes because uh, we're not a tech company, Mm-mm. we don't we're not working in a garage or yeah. tucked away. We're front and center. We're, mm-hmm. we're retail. We're yeah. we're street. You know, like we're on the street, and so we need. It's important for us to be a part of the community. So this is the, this is the last question I ask before we start wrapping up. But so. I'm curious, like, why do that, right? Like, it's awesome, it's incredible, but it, it would be just as easy for you guys to kind of go back, perfect your concept, and continue it. Yeah. But, you know, these local events have been such a big part of you. Is it come back to marketing? Does it come back to a purpose that you've had? But it's such a unique thing, and I think it's so valuable. I'm just kind of curious, what was the inspiration? Um, I think it starts it starts five years ago with marketing. Cause mm-hmm. it's, when we started, no one knew who the hell we were. We no. were, and we were out there you know, hustling for eat every single customer. So yeah. initially it was, we just got to, we just need to hit the streets and do, do some, mm-hmm. we, need, we need to be seen essentially. Yeah. Um, but now it's, it's more so just being a good part of the good member yeah. of the community. And then is the, it like the a third thing I was, like, yeah, a little, I think it kind mm-hmm. of is. Um, and then the third thing is I, I think our, 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 bar, our team members really mm-hmm. like it. It's a, fun, yeah. it changes. It's a, so all, you know, they, they, they go in, cut hair, do shaves all day, every day. And yep. all of a sudden, when you're doing a fun event at a brewery, at a oh, business, yeah, it's cool. it kind of changes it up. And so they, 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 I think they, they see the value. And we like to kind of throw them something different. Mm-hmm. I think that's like a great lesson for other local businesses tuning in. Like finding ways to get outside of your four walls to interact with other people yeah, too. It's, so it's um, absolutely. Only th- I mean, it's, it's uh, without women I mean, to kind of to your point, it's, it's not easy in a mm-hmm. sense. Like you know, loading a loading a extremely heavy barber chair no, in the back of my car and yeah. moving around then you know and there's an actual you know like when we pull someone out of our shop we're that chair you know back in the shop sits empty we yep. make zero dollars on that so you know, there's an element of oh yeah. wait a second here but that when reality when, it, when it's all said and done though we, we we don't i can't let myself go down the road of well that's going to cost us x amount of dollars mm-hmm. and we, it, I, we the way I view Arrow is it's a marathon, not a sprint. Because mm-hmm. um, if I was worried, if, if it was a sprint, I'd say no to a lot more things yeah. because you're thinking, well, that's, you know, I've got mm-hmm. to pay the person for their time when they're doing this. I'm not getting paid anything back. Yeah. The business, excuse me, isn't getting paid anything back. The chair back in the shop sits empty. But that's that's the sprint mentality. We're, we see this as long term. Arrow is Arrow's our baby. We, mm-hmm. we, we want to see this thing through. And, and so... With that marathon mentality, yeah, okay, so so be it that that we didn't make any money off of a chair sat empty in one mm-hmm. of our shops. 
But guess what? A whole bunch of people that work at this company in Durham or Raleigh yep. have now experienced us, and now they in might a very come. personal way mm-hmm, too. Mm-hmm. So, what's next on the marathon for uh, Era? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we just I, quite quite honestly, we just there's always stuff to be doing with the current shops. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we, you know we've been around for five years, but that's still pretty young, if you will. And so we're trying to figure things out, uh, tighten up the tighten up the uh, some of the the operations, and then um, and then. You know, we just opened up a new shop three or four weeks ago. So yeah. that's that's a project in itself. Uh-huh. You know, that's that's by no means just because you open a shop doesn't mean you're done. Any, with it. No, not <laughs> you at all. Keep going. That's like the, the the hard work starts mm-hmm. then, if you will. And so we we really need to make sure all sh- all six shops are are humming. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then uh, staffing's huge for us. I have to keep all of our folks yeah. happy and motivated and well paid and um, and fed on their birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's awesome so one one question for you to kind of understand more about your philosophy you have the world's attention for five minutes what do you say oh jacob a less yeah. a lesson you want to teach a philosophy you live by maybe like something you you stand true to yeah okay so i'm gonna go back to like the most basic stuff because yeah. I, I think i guess part of my i don't know if you picked up on it my theme is that i i i, I try to be very humble and whatnot mm-hmm. in the sense like I, I don't think you know did we come up with the greatest idea ever of course not you know like, is, are we but that's kind of that is our approach is that mm-hmm. everyone everyone wants to do what's sexy and cool in my opinion mm-hmm. and we just went to an old school concept that's been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yeah. years and so what I'm getting at is I think there's true value in just getting back to the, the simple fundamental things and so there's some there's some great lines if you will that have been shared with me whether it be family members or military colleagues or whatnot that I, I always go back to. Mm-hmm. And some are, my dad always said, uh, plan your work and work your plan. Okay. And so yeah, yeah. that's a key one that, um, that, you know, nothing, you need to actually have all the, the ducks in a row for mm-hmm. stuff to actually happen. Yeah. So you can't just show up and say, let's make, let's, let's make some money today. Mm-hmm. Let's do something great. If the, if the actual due diligence hasn't been done ahead of time. Yeah. So that's one um, uh, one of my mentors in the military, his line was, um, take your work very seriously, but never take yourself too serious. Mm. And I think that's a key one. I really like that one. Because if you, no one, let's just, you know, delve into that a little bit more. Take your work real serious. One, you ab- you never want to be around someone that isn't taking their work serious enough because I mean, the work is work. We need mm-hmm. to get stuff done. Right. And so obviously you want to take your work seriously. That's, that's an obvious statement. But then you pair it up with don't take yourself too serious because there's a lot of people out there that take their work really seriously, very serious. So you're thinking, that's great. But mm-hmm. then all of a sudden they take themselves too serious. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden you're like, well, this is kind of like you're, <laughs> you're no fun to be around. Yeah, right? yeah. You're, just, you're, 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 you're too difficult. You're too demanding. You're burning people out, whatever the mm-hmm. case may be. So I think the pairing up of taking your work very seriously but never yourself too serious. You yeah. have to show a sense of humor. You have to show some humility. You have to you have to be able to tell stand in front of your team, your platoon, your employees and say, "Guys, I screwed up." Yeah. Like, here's why I screwed up and here's why it won't happen again and uh-huh. stuff like that. And so um, or just make a fool of yourself. I mean, I, we had our we had our uh, Halloween party um, well, obviously October 31st and yeah. had the whole company we rented out a bar and I was Popeye. Nice. So, you know, it's like you have to you, you have to let loose a little bit and show love everybody it. that yeah, you're 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 willing and able to um, play the different roles. Um, I think those it, are two great themes. Yeah. I mean, honestly, two great you know things to think about. And one thing that I'd say, and I wonder if you agree with this, like there's beauty in the basics. Yes. And that, like something that you've done so well is find that beauty, and then you know. So I'll just when I when it. I when the whole world's listening to me, I'll have you speak for me. <laughs> you just you just nailed. It. I just rambled for about four or five minutes, and you just, you just got to exactly what I was trying to. Get. There's beauty in the basics. Yeah, I, I love that, man. And so, Pete, thank you so much for coming in. Absolutely. Where can people find you and Arrow online? Yeah. So the the website is guaranteedshorterhair.com, um, and then the. The Instagram handle is guaranteed underscore shorter underscore hair. Mm-hmm. Um, if you didn't pick up on a while back, we had a little bit of a name issue yeah. <laughs> a couple of years ago. That's why our website and our handle are a little different. Um, but the guaranteed shorter hair has kind of taken a life of its own. People really like it because it's, yeah. it's kind of witty. Again, it goes back to we take this work very seriously. We have you know we have 52 employees that we care deeply about. That this is how they make a living. This is how they pay their rent and put food on the table. But there's also it, you've got to show enough humility. Like, 
our website's guaranteed shorterhair.com. Yeah. <laughs> like at some point you just have to realize uh, it's, we only, fun. it's fun. It's it supposed really to be fun. Is, the more fun you have, the, the smoother things usually go too. Well, hey Pete, thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate Absolutely, it, brother. Man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Awesome. So before we, before we end this, can you give us like a 30 second, um, elevator pitch on arrow? Just like what arrow is. Yeah. Like just kind of, Arrow is. It doesn't have to be an elevator. Am I still pitch. alive right now? Yeah. All right. This is fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is just, this. This is a soundbite we might use. Okay. I would at, potentially at the beginning. So just like arrow is a, however you describe uh, it to someone. It. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, I'll just go. Get yeah. Just around. go for it. Right. Yep. Um, arrow is a updated approach to an old school concept. It's a you know barbershop concept. We do complimentary beers. Um, you can book online, which is huge. So you uh, out to you know a couple weeks out, you can pick your location, date, time. Even has pictures of our folks on the website. So you know who's you know who's giving you a haircut. You come in, um, you f- the music, the vibe, the culture, the decor, everything is pretty cool, pretty um, pretty approachable, pretty comfortable. Um, and it's at a, all all this is at a very fair price. Men's cuts are twenty one dollars with a with a local beer from either Full Stream or Trophy. So it's. It's a, uh, we really, we're, we're proud of what we have and I think everyone would enjoy it, enjoy it if they give us a try. Awesome. That's perfect.